so the all of these school shootings that have happened um, in recent years um, and you know in recent days um, it seems like there's one every other day now um, you know I, I've, I feel like nobody is talking about the fact that this isn't a gun problem it's not a gun problem um, do I believe that we should do everything we can to keep guns out of the hands of uh, kids under 18? Absolutely. Um, I feel that uh, there should be restrictions on who can purchase guns and uh, there should be a crackdown on any black market gun sales uh, that might be happening around the country. Um, I, I fully believe that uh, guns should be monitored um, and uh, protected. But uh, I also believe that I'm sort of lawful good over here, lawful good. So, um, you know, it's in the amendment, it's in the Constitution, where we have the right to bear arms, we have the right to protect our homes, we have the right to do that in any way we see fit. Um, however, because guns are so deadly, um, there really does need to be some form of tracking system to make sure uh, we can understand who's purchasing guns, how, uh, how they're being used, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, I do feel that the school shootings in, in every single case, there's a school shooting. Um, it's not about the guns. It has nothing to do with guns. Um, it has everything to do with the psychology of, uh, uh, depression, loneliness, um, the feeling of being uh, bullied and uh, feeling like you need to retaliate, feeling like um, nobody is listening to you, feeling like nobody cares, feeling like um, you know nobody will care if you die or if uh, you do some horrible act, right? So it's a cry for attention. Um, it's like when children throw temper tantrums in the middle of Target. Okay, this is childhood behavior. This is childish behavior. Um, so the the behavior of the people that are going into the schools, um, it doesn't matter the age of the person. This is absolutely all about um, the mental stability of that person. And in many cases, the children who are doing the shooting, um, it's it's very much a cry for help. It's a cry for uh, nobody's paying attention to me. I've been bullied. I need to retaliate. And uh, no one has shown these children that violence in any way, shape, or form is not the way to treat their, their hurt, their pain, their hurting. They're hurting inside and no one has told them it's okay to hurt, it's okay to feel those feelings, and it's okay to talk to them, talk to somebody about them. And so what I feel like the, the biggest problem is, is that we have a lack of resources in our schools. Um, our children are away from home uh, most of the day, five days a week. Um, so we have these people in their lives, these teachers and counselors and principals who are in their lives uh, every day. Um, and so it, it takes a village. And, and when you strip teachers and counselors uh, from parental style teaching, it can seriously detriment the child. Um, I don't believe in spanking, okay? I don't believe in negative reinforcement, okay? I don't believe that we should go back to like the archaic days of like ruler smacking. But I do believe that teachers and counselors and principals, um, you know, we're putting our children in their hands. We're putting our children, we're saying, hey, you're a community of people that I trust to raise my child. And so we need to be giving them the resources, the money, uh, the time to, uh, to spend in, in developing our children's minds. And, and in doing that, um, making them well adjusted and, and helping them realize that violence in any situation is not the way to deal with your own problems. Um, that the parents of the children who, who lash out and do the shooting at, at the schools or, um, or, or retaliate in some violent way, um, these parents are good parents. Um, they are well-intentioned and I feel for them. I do. Because 
No one should have to go through that. That is absolutely the most terrifying thing as a parent to know that your child um, it was suffering so much that they resorted to violent behavior um, and you, you, you couldn't see it. And, and the problem, part of the problem is, is when you do see your kids, um, they're putting on a face because you don't see them all day. Your, their teachers see them all day and their principals see them all day. And these are the people we need to be arming with, not guns. We don't need to be arming our teachers with guns. I think that's absolutely freaking ludicrous. We need to be arming them with money. We need to be giving them money and we need to be paying them for their time and paying them for the resources that they are spending on our children. We, they, they see our children more than we do. And I don't even have kids. And I can tell you, it takes a village. So we need to be allowing our teachers and our, and our, our, our counselors at our schools to be more behaviorally aware of our children um, and give them the, the resources to help our children find themselves. And, you know, their kids are maturing so fast these days. They're growing up so quick because they have access to everything. They have the Wikipedia, they have the Google, they have internet, um, all these things that, you know, uh, we didn't have um, as, you know, Generation X, we didn't have that stuff growing up. So for me, it's like you, you're, you're sort of spoon feeding your kids all of this information and they don't know what to do with it. They have no flipping clue how to register all of the information that is thrown at them every second of every day. And it's, it's just getting very difficult to, to know right from wrong. And that's why we need to um, put less emphasis on academia, which le reading and writing and, and, and arithmetic, right? Those are the core foundations of any, um, uh, uh, of any society. However, the other part of society is communicating with other people and developing a community and developing, um, you know, uh, a support system, right? You want to have friends and family in your life that are supportive. And, um, and I just feel like when you, when we, when we put all of this emphasis on children to learn, um, useless facts, um, like what year Columbus landed on this continent, uh, I feel like uh, we're missing an opportunity to foster characteristics in our children um, that will help them become really great, powerful leaders of our of our nations. And um, as we're seeing these days, uh, we need more compassion in our leadership. We need more uh, patience, communication. Um, transparency. We need more people in our leadership positions that um, have these really great qualities. Um, and you're not going to get that by, you know, drilling world history into their brains. You're going to get that by, by fostering uh, behaviors um, that are conducive to community building. And and that's kind of what my, that's where my brain is, right? So I feel like it's not the parent's fault. It's not the parent's fault at all. You can sit here and say, oh, well, the parents should have noticed. The parents should have known something was wrong. They should have picked up on it. No, they see their kids like three hours every night and that's it. Like, and maybe like 15 minutes in the morning between the time they get out of the shower and the time they get on the bus. Like it's, it's, it's a it's a structure problem. Number one, our kids aren't getting enough sleep, um, so that's part of the problem. Uh, our kids need way more sleep than what they're getting. Um, you know, our 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 teenagers are going to bed at you know 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, and then they're rolling out of bed at five o'clock in the morning to be on the bus by six 
to be at school by 7.30. And it's like, I don't even have to get up for work until 7.30. So um, we're, we're not exactly, uh, you know, priming them for working environments. Um, and also, you know, like literally science has proven that um, a lack of sleep can seriously affect your brain and how it functions and some of those neuron processing systems that uh, that relate to depression, anxiety, uh, loneliness, all of those things are all triggered by the same thing, right? It's all, it's all part of the same part of the brain. So um, sleep deprivation exacerbates that tenfold. Um, so we're not getting, our, our kids are not getting enough sleep. We're feeding them uh, 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 shit food because it's cheap. Like when the fuck did um, vegetables become so gosh darn expensive? Um, and um, you know, th the third thing for me is uh, uh, you know, no more outside, right? It's not safe to go outside anymore. We can't send our kids playing on the street anymore. Um, and uh, not to mention, they'd rather be you know playing video games now. I am a video game nerd and I love video games, but I also really truly enjoy being in nature and being out in the woods and enjoying a hike or enjoying a walk um, or riding my bike or going down to the lake and just sit and enjoy the sun and read a book. Um, you know, but I spent a lot of time outside as a kid. Um, like a lot. <laughs> my mom on the weekends, it was like, go outside, get out of the house or I will murder you. So we were out of the house. We, we did not have, we didn't have cable TV. Um, so it was like five channels and that was it. And if there's nothing on, you go outside. If it's snowing or raining, um, you sit in the basement and you play dress up or you play with your toys. Um, you know, you foster imagination. And that's one of the things I feel like, um, we're, we're lacking in kids. Uh, we need to limit screen time. And, uh, I, and, I, and I say that with all the love of video games, because boy, let me tell you, every morning I wake up and I log on video games. And every night before I go to bed, I'm playing video games. Um, so I'm just as bad, I'm just as guilty at 35 years old. However, um, you know, growing minds, you need to foster imagination and creativity and these sorts of things. And again, that's all c coming back to um, being able to relate to others and, and um, fostering empathy and compassion in our children. I feel like that's so important um, because when you forget about empathy and about understanding where other people are coming from, then oftentimes that self-centered narcissistic behavior becomes the forefront of, of, their, of their persona. And that's very dangerous. Um, especially if they start feeling anxious and depressed because they're going to retaliate and they're going to say, well, you bullied me, so I'm going to shoot you or I'm going to harm you in some way. Um, that's, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to one up you because, uh, I, I got to get the last word or the last say, or, um, uh, you know, I'm not being heard. And these are, these are the dangerous things that I feel like are, are threatening our kids. Um, and you know, it all comes back to school. They're at school just as much as we're at work. And if you don't like your job, you get another job. Well, kids can't do that. Kids, you kids cannot change classrooms or, or in a, in a lot of circumstances, they can't change schools. They can't do that. So, um, what you're telling them is you're stuck. There's nowhere to go. And if you're lonely and depressed and you're anxious, uh, too bad suck it up. Um, and we got to stop doing that. We got to stop doing that to our kids. So, um, I know this is like a really long video, so I will probably edit this down, um, for time, but those were some key points that I wanted to talk about because I, I feel like a very, a very often, as soon as the school shooting happens, it's like, Oh, well, they're going to take our guns away. Oh, well, it's guns, 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 guns. It's not about the goddamn guns. It's not about the guns. It's about the fact that these kids, um, felt like there was no other way to be heard. And that's sad. That's depressingly sad. And um, we need to stop focusing on the gun part of this whole situation and start focusing on the mentality of the people going into these shootings. That is where we need to focus our energy. And we need to put our resources back in our goddamn teachers. Um, 
you know, it's it's absolutely fucking ridiculous that our our um, our actors and our sports uh, players make quadruple what our teachers make. I mean, teachers make maybe forty five, fifty thousand dollars a year. Um, our sports players are making millions of dollars a year, millions of dollars a year for playing a sport. Like, what? What? They didn't get there without teachers. Um, actors didn't get there without teachers. And, um, you know, all of these people, like, the, it's just ridiculous to me. Like, how, how are we not putting our resources into teachers and schools and making sure the environments our kids are growing up in are, are healthy and happy? Oh, and that's the other thing. Um, do not make our schools like fucking prisons. That is the worst possible thing you can do to a child, is make them feel like it's, uh, like, not only am I feeling lonely and depressed and can't escape the school, but now it feels oppressive, right? No, 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 no. That's awful. Like, awful! Why would we ever do that to our children? Like, make them feel like they're locked up and being oppressed. Um, with barbed wire and, and metal detectors. I mean, this is this is so silly. Um, you know, treat the root of the problem, guys. Um, don't spend millions of dollars uh, uh, putting metal detectors and barbed wire around our schools. Give it to the teachers. Give it to counselors. Hire more counselors, right? I want a counselor for every goddamn classroom. I want them monitoring kids' behavior. I want them, you know, uh, uh, video cameras in the schools to monitor kids and, and who's who's picking on who and and um, you know, okay, so so bullies, right? So bullies are the problem. Well, what are bullies going through? Bullies are going through anxiety too. They're feeling um, belittled and small, and they need to feel strong too. So they 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 lash out and they bully because they don't have any other way to feel heard, and that's a problem. So this is where we need to spend our money. It's not, this is so silly. Oh, well, we need to put metal detectors and, and guns in our schools and arm our teachers. No, we need to fucking hire more teachers. Like, what is the problem? I don't understand why people aren't seeing this. I am, I am not a supporter of guns. I don't own a gun. I don't plan on owning a gun. I think they're, um, they're silly. But what I do support is the Constitution. And if you want to own a gun, that's your prerogative. Just make sure the safety's on and there's no bullets in it when you have it around your kids. Um, you know, so whatever. But we need to limit our access to guns and we need to um, realize that the root of these problems, right, are not the guns. It has nothing to do with the guns. Um, do not take guns away from people um, just because a school shooting happened. We need to we need to get to the root of the problem and start seeing to mental illness with our dietary um, and sedentary lives. Like um, the, our dietary consumption has changed so drastically in the last hundred years, and we're much more sedentary now than we ever have been. Um, case in point, uh, you know. We're sleep deprived. We're not eating right. Um, it's it's fostering all of these mental health issues. I myself am on uh, anxiety medication, so it's 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 a lack of mental health and and mental health awareness. Um, this is the problem, right? So uh, I had a very good friend of ours, 31 years old, committed suicide last September. Stephanie, I love you, um, and I'm we miss you terribly, um, but. She was in a bad place. And, you know, it, it's, sometimes it's very hard. Sometimes it's very hard to get out of that, that mental place. Um, but we need to be teaching our children and our adults that um, guns and suicide and, and, and homicide is not the answer. It's not going to fix the problem. You are having a problem and going out and retaliating and shooting someone is not going to fix your problem. So somewhere across the line, kids are missing that, that memo. They're missing it. And um, we need to put the resources in the right places to make sure that problem goes away. Yeah, thanks for listening to me ramble while I drive and um, see you later.